I'm not crying. No, 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 no. No, I just have something in my eye. I, I promise. No, I'm okay. I swear I'm not crying. <laughs> oh, actually, that, that little break kind of sounded like you were crying. Oh, man. This so, is a, this movie out of left field. I, 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 we'd heard that it was sad, but it is devastating. This one. <laughs> I didn't really look up anything about what the movie was. I basically only knew the title and from someone who suggested it to us that, yes, it was a sad movie. I didn't know I was going to be depressed from the first minute that the movie started because they pull a Tarantino, they basically show you the ending, and then they go, skirt, I'll show you where this ends up, but I'm going to show you how it ends now. Yeah, big foreshadow. We're talking Grave of the Fireflies, by the way. <laughs> if you didn't already uh, see the title. This is a, a Studio Ghibli film, which we... Are used to the light and bubbly. We've got Totoro. Heck, I'm wearing a shirt. Didn't we even plan that? Well, and actually, so Grave of the Fireflies was a double feature. No kidding. And it came out the same time as Totoro. Really? So you got massive, war-depressed, <laughs> war-torn Japan and lighthearted, fanciful Totoro. Yeah, crazy. I didn't know that was the... Thank you for that little bit of knowledge. Yeah. We highly suggest, of course, before listening to this, we're not going to hold you to it. We would really, really recommend watching it. We just watched it for the first time for this. And I would have to say, this is a must watch. It's not just our biased opinion as anime lovers telling you this. It had, I think you just said 100% on Rotten Tomatoes for Which, review. that was back when it meant something on that website. <laughs> but on my anime list, it's got an 8.51. I mean, there are some nits of the movie. I just have one nit. But oh, is it? for the rest of the movie, I mean, five minutes in or ten minutes in, I think I told you... Everyone in the world should watch this movie, and this is why war sucks, and it should never happen. Because yes. it's always the people who are the bystanders affected by the war that you don't think about. Well, and that's what's so special about this. I'm used to my Black Hawk Down, Saving Private Ryan, like, what's going on in this battle? And especially this movie hits home just because that was, you know, we're technically the bad guys in the scenario of this movie, but... More importantly is, yes, we're seeing two very innocent young kids dealing with stuff that we'll talk about. And it's the perspective is crazy. Yeah. It's very sad. Even like when it gets into the family stuff. Oi. Buckle up for the 88 minutes of this movie's runtime. Didn't need tissues until the end. But if you really cry during movies, you might want those tissues next to you the whole time. It truly does help that it's a cartoon. I feel like you get that nice suspension of disbelief, if if that even is the proper wordage here. But, like, it helps. At the end of the day, as sad as you are, at least it's a cartoon. See, but it's based, based yeah. off of a story, which I think makes it so maybe, just in your heart. Maybe I'm saying it to make myself feel better. Okay. <laughs> and also, you know Studio Ghibli, who's animating it, there's a different production team behind it, but Studio Ghibli animated it. So it's all those nuances that we've talked about before that Ghibli does with making the characters seem so realistic. They do in this movie. It's a beautiful film. The way that characters act and move is very realistic. So it it is hard to separate Yeah, you kind of lose it, too. I think it hits home enough to where you don't even realize you're watching a cartoon at some points. The animation is beautiful, especially when it gets into some of the firebombing stuff, which was just brutal. Just a couple more quick things before I guess we get into it, into it. And especially, and I'm not saying this, I can't directly quote it, but my dude, Roger Ebert, rest his soul. But when he had his show and he was doing reviews, he called this one of the greatest war films ever made. I, I, I wouldn't disagree. I'm a weeb. But I would have to agree with it. I think it is a nice change of pace, as we've been saying. See it. Th this actually only happened because um, a couple of friends of mine, we had uh, Kevin and then we also had Iko, who were saying, oh, yeah, got to do Grave of the Fireflies. Boy, howdy, were they right? Thank you, guys, both of you. And 
so happy. So happy, happy, and sad. Yeah. Happy that we watched it because obviously it's a classic for a reason, but sad because of the content. Absolutely. I, I like the looser watch with us. That Gundam one was great. As great as I can say it was, even <laughs> though I hate listening. Still riding off the high of that. Yeah, that was, that was a good episode, I think. Well, I was told. <laughs> I listened to it once. I, I'm, uh, I'm starting to somewhat be okay with my voice. Somewhat. <laughs> Anyways. The, I think one of the most powerful scenes in this is, well, of course, when you think back to it, I, I think it's kind of very somber right when you get into it, but you have our main character. He's sitting in the train station and he's looking starved. It's sad, right? Minute one. You don't even get a anything. They're not going to try and set anything fun up for you. And he is just in there and he eventually falls to the ground and just dies within the first couple minutes. And he drops this tin, which then you find out comes into play later. But um, basically this janitor picks up that tin, throws it out into a field. And then you see him. He's kind of watching it in third person as a spirit, right, at this point. And he walks over and then from the tin, his sister shows up and you're like, oh, no. Him and his sister are Little dead. sweetie pie. And I think he says, you know, I... And this on September something, 1945 is when I died. Ah, uh, yes. Their story begins September 21st, 1945. That was the day I died, he says in, yeah. in the narration. And then you get this beautiful sequence where Spirit, Seta, and his sister are walking through the countryside and then it kind of morphs because obviously we just saw him pass and we have these two spirits. It morphs into then where our story is going to begin. Yeah. Right before the air raids happen. Yeah, because I think it jumps and then it's his mom saying, hey, we got to get to the shelter. It was so, and the thing is, is his sweetie pie of a mom, sweetie pie of a little sister. Good family this guy's got. You unfortunately don't get to have the mother around long enough and you instantly see a story that hits, I, I think it extra hits home because you have a kid who instantly needs to grow up due to his circumstances and has to be strong for his little sister. And there is a scene where he breaks and he's crying. That that was my closest moment, like when he was doing that, because it's mm -hmm. like, that is brutal. Because, you know, he's just given it the and best he's And he's only got. got himself and he doesn't have anyone that he can even talk to about it. He's basically internalizing everything and he's trying to put on a good face throughout this whole thing for his sister. And he's just. Yeah. How old is he? He. I think they, I think I read like 14, maybe like yeah, young, young teen. And then his sister's like four or something like, like that. Tod they don't, they don't say, but toddler. Yeah. She seems very, very young, but you see him and it was actually interesting. You see him kind of hiding that stuff during their raid, just in case to come back to it, which that'll come into play. But unfortunately we're greeted with the uh, very unfortunate thing of him and his sister are late to get to his mom at the shelter, but you end up finding out that she is caught in the air raid or whatever yeah. and the next time you see her she's all bandaged up yeah this and, and we read some funny comments about this movie being in the the kids section at maybe libraries and stuff due to it being studio ghibli yeah this one i don't <laughs> this is this is a very unconventional child movie and you're gonna find out quickly that these kids do end up being orphaned the mom does pass away and i think one of watching Spoiler, watching well, the children course. die is sad. You see that progression and them dying from malnutrition and yeah. hunger, but I and thought— And that's no spoiler. They get that minute one. We just told them. They yeah. know that they're going to, but it is sad knowing But that. I think it's so harrowing that you, you see the mom when they finally see that she's in the school where they've bandaged her up kind of quickly to try and get her to a hospital— it's very just shocking, I guess, yeah. because she's she's not looking good. And you got all these other people. I mean, I think she were, looks the worst out of everyone. And then she ends up passing away before they can even get her to the hospital. And when they're carrying her out of the school to right bury past her him. right past him, she has like maggots on her. And I just couldn't imagine that. Yeah. In real life, that'd be so terrifying. And I don't know how he can keep it together. I think that's what's so effective about the movie, too, 
is I didn't need any time to connect with him. Like I felt like I was just in his shoes moment one. Oh, even how he you... just wraps his little sister to his back when they're getting... That was oh my gosh, I loved it. That yeah, was so when they cute. were trying to get ready to leave the house, they had their little kind of like Japanese style kind of way you would attach a kid to to your back. It was really oh, cute. Oh my gosh. But with the mom gone, he initially lies to his sister, just saying, oh, she's at, we'll see her later, we'll see her later. And then they end up having to, the the town's decimated. It's Which is another sad part when they do the city pans, you see charred people and yeah. bodies in the rubble. and 88. They weren't messing around, right? This was 1988, did you say? Yes, 88. Yeah. I was like, The animators in 88 weren't messing around. Yeah. So... Jumping back to this is a huge skirt, how we just said this is a movie everyone has to watch. I know pretty much every one of our watch with us have been like that. This one, Akira, probably put, oh, it goes in the shell, Akira. I, I, I'd put this above for the average viewer who's not into anime. I'd put this one above those just because I think this one's more of a relatable story because people watch war movies. You know how it goes. But. Well, and I, every generation there's been a war, so you can... Even though you might not know all the nuances of why the sides were fighting for that war, I think everyone can relate to what that would feel like to get caught up in that and yeah. really see what's behind the curtain that people don't ever talk about. Yeah, especially with it's a blessing for most people that they won't hopefully won't experience war on their homeland and see that type of and this puts this movie puts that into a huge perspective like this is these kids weren't doing anything wrong they're just caught up in this whole thing and it is so beyond sad because no one comes out looking good especially america in this instance it was it's yeah it is it's depressing but it, anywho anywho so we leave our two poor kids going back to the Yes, of course. The, the plot isn't very dense. No. As, as you've no. said, this isn't a Saving Private Ryan or any other war movie where you might have some character development. There's really no character development of the story. It's basically plot, which is the beginning that we talked about where they have the initial air raids where they lose their home and their mother. Now they go and live with their aunt, a mm -hmm. distant aunt and maybe a next town or two over. Which becomes just another point of uh, anger. Yeah. <laughs> that aunt. Which, it started off relatively fine in the beginning. Absolutely, because you imagine, oh, you go to, you know, something bad has happened. You go to live with your aunt, and you can think of your aunt as like, oh, of course she would take care of me. This is a scenario where even, like, because of the wartime, she's extra brutal. Or who knows what it was, but I think it was just because it was wartime. But unfortunately, she's very unfair to these her, her, her niece and her nephew. Yeah. And she's very much into pampering her own family over them. Which that, one of them is only her family that they show, a daughter. And then she kept saying a tenant. So it was only her daughter. Oh, that wasn't. I um, don't think I when we were reading the subtitles, it kept saying tenant or someone like that. I don't think it was her family. Oh, well. so even more so. Very annoying. And I remember the, f I knew right off the bat, cue moment one when we see this biatch, yeah. which I put in my notes, this bitch, yeah. <laughs> and all of oh. my grievances towards her. We knew we weren't going to like her for moment one. But we see in the beginning, he's burying things in the ground in these pots. And you see him later coming back to get these things, food, like perishable food and some pickled things that he had saved, mm -hmm. brought them back, unpackaging them for the aunt. And she immediately says something along the lines of, oh, the Navy gets the best things because his dad's in the Navy mm -hmm. and is shuffling through like, oh, is this butter and pickled plums and ooh, this and that. And it's like, listen. Get your hands off. of. Off. I mean, like, I get that she should be able to maybe eat some of it. She's going to have to make course, it for you know, these the kids roof over the head. Sure. Yeah. So that already set up a red flag for me in my mind, watching that escapade go down. Mm -hmm. And then you see a little later when she's serving her daughter, the tenant and them to dinner. The you, rice porridge, I believe. Right? No, the pot of like soup or 
whatever stew she has, and you see her ladling from the bottom huge scoops of vegetables and whatever. Like and a, the actual substance to yeah, it. Yeah, and giving it to her daughter and the tenant, and then you see the kids are already eating. Mm-hmm. But the sister goes, oh, can I have some more? And you see her, and they show it this time, her ladle just skimming the top for broth and some maybe seaweed or whatever um, grassy green yeah. may have been in there. And I was like, are you kidding me? I was yeah. so... The food she probably used for that meal were what he brought from his yeah. house. And I was, okay, this lady needs to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's the <laughs> the the minute details and the little things like that that... You could maybe not catch the first time and you can go back and watch it. But they were pretty direct with it. That, yeah, that time. But being the son of someone in the Navy, you already see that he's had this thing where he doesn't have his dad there. So he's already the man of the house. Then his mother dies. This is completely going back kind of a little bit. But this poor dude, he's just, he has to grow up. He has to be the man of the house. He has to be strong. So when you... I've said it before. I'm just going to say it one more time. When he breaks in the movie, you feel it just because he's trying to be a tough boy. Oh, blessed goodness. Yeah. So they can't handle living with their aunt anymore. Well, no, you need to go through some more things. You can't just say we can't. You want me to harp? No, I mean, she's clearly an animal. We need to give a couple more examples (laughs) of her being a psycho. Let me pull out (laughs) some more examples. I didn't know if I wanted to be rain the evil on the ant she's i think she, a great one of the greater villains of this movie <laughs> i hate her I after the war her. it's the ant yeah she's ursula so another thing with food she was just she was just a son of a gun with the food is what i've noticed but he goes and he gets oh no she brings out the kimonos that the mom had and at this point the little sister still doesn't know that the mother is gone but the aunt is aware of it. And so there were these kimonos that their mother had had. And she's like, well, hey, why don't we sell it? We can get some rice for it. That'd be great. She brings back a bunch of rice. And you're like feeling great because she fills up a glass jar for them. And you realize, well, she's keeping some, which doesn't make any sense because it's the mother's. But roof over the head, you know, whatever. Can't can't fight that too much. But you still get that feeling of, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, go fill up another little thing for them. But he's so stoked on the rice that you can just let it go. It is what it is, which then the rice even comes up a little bit later. They're having this rice porridge that I was trying to mention earlier. She doesn't want any of it. Yeah, well, they're serving it up. They're having a good time. But then when seconds comes along, our little girl doesn't want any more. And Big Brother's like, it's okay. We're drowning in rice right now. You'll have a rice ball for lunch. You can have a rice ball. The ant snaps. What she say? Like, you can... You think you can have a rice ball? You're going to be eating rice porridge for lunch today, too, because you think you're going to eat the same as what the people working for our country are getting? Because she obviously made the rice balls in the bentos for her daughter and this tenant who are working for yeah. the government. Oh, that's this whole vibe of this movie. One, depressing. Two, hating the ant. And three, just wanting to keep that little baby girl safe. Some would think, and I thought it a couple times, too, how annoying the little girl was with her complaining and stuff. But then you think about it. She's a toddler. I think you're used to watching Ghibli movies where the kids just have a little bit more, you know, wittiness, I guess, to them. So you always assume they're older. But you need to realize that... She's probably only four or something, so she's yeah. going to have the nuances of a toddler. She's going to be happy and carefree and playing when she wants to be, but when she's hangry, you're going to get the toddler. Yeah, she's a little whiny. And I, I, I did have that twinge when Setsuko is, when she is having a tantrum, and you're like, shut her up. And then, But what toddler doesn't exactly. do that? So I really tried to separate that from what I'm used to seeing in a Ghibli movie with the characters and what I'm supposed to be seeing and understanding in this moment. Yeah. Saita ends up seeing that, you know what, she's complained enough. Um, Because she was complaining about literally everything. I don't think they could have done a possible good thing right. I think he was just relaxing one day. She yelled at him for relaxing. So they leave. They're like, later. Yeah, Ejecto-cito. We're out. (laughs) 
They don't have a plan, though, unfortunately. But luckily, one of the places that they kind of would go and play was these two kind of mines. A uh, bomb shelter. These in little the side shelters. Of a hill. And they're like, OK, it's time to make a home. And they do just as people that age would. It was adorable. And they did well. They had a little swing. They put up this netting. And they still did have a couple things that he was able to trade and sell to at least get some food at the start. And you're like, you know what? Things are looking up. He's doing good. He's taking good care. He's getting his little sister these little hard uh, fruit drop, like these candies. candies. She loves them to death. Um, just doing cute little things, like when she ran out of candy and he puts water into the mm, canister. That was really sweet. Yeah, that was cute. What a good, old, what a good uh, older brother. And he let her have all of it. All of it. Didn't want to. Didn't she, want to drop. Well, she did want to share, and he said no that she could have it. Mm-hmm. And I, that was so sweet. And actually, when he's going to get the last of his money, speaking of getting all that money out, um, because he was using savings from his mother as well, mm. he went to go get the last of it, and the guy came in just saying, "Well, the wars, we've surrendered because all of our ships are destroyed." Well. His dad's in the Navy, so what does that mean? So then he finds out his dad's dead now. This kid can't catch a break, and I just wanted something to go right for him, but the progression is just natural, and then it's just it's wrong after wrong after wrong. And when they're getting down on the end of the food that they had, it gets crazy. The little umbrella with all the holes in it. Yeah, when they're buying the stuff, some rice... I can't remember what else. I think maybe she picked up a comb. Yeah. Got a comb. Well, she had the comb in. And he <laughs> she was, was like, you know it. what? Give me the comb too. <laughs> and, and he asked for the umbrella. And he's like, oh, I think I have one. And in the back of my mind, I knew it was going to be some shabby umbrella. And sure shit, it was. Yeah. But who knows? Could have been shabby chic. They were happy with it. <laughs> That's all that mattered. He's carrying his sister around. This has the move. This movie had the great taste of. It was very morbid, very real, very gritty, but also it was so charming. I don't think you were ever, you were uncomfortable, but not in a way of like, I don't know. I just, I very much enjoyed it. I My can't eye say ducks enough. were uncomfortable. Yeah, no kidding. So as you know, because you've watched it by this point, people, his poor sister, you start seeing she's getting a little bit more and more malnourished they even mentioned diarrhea at one point he finally is like i gotta get her to a doctor this could be jumping forward way too much but no i well there's nothing really else to, it just kind of is a slow progression from yeah there. you're more of just kind of there for the ride you're watching them do their things and i think the part that really lets you in that she's not doing too well is when they're sitting and he's combing her hair and they both have their shirts off in their kind of like undies, and she's got all of the rashes and stuff on her body. Yeah, very splotchy. And yeah. And he goes to the doctor. Another thing is because, of course, it's wartime. They go to the doctor, and you think, of course, they're going to help these two kids. I understand they're orphans, but the doc- give them something. No, he literally just gives the city. He's like, yeah, she's she's malnourished, so figure that out. Like, okay, well, would give her something. that he, he wants the doctor to be that adult, that something that's helpful and he yells at the doctor he's like well give her something nothing so you realize how futile their situation is we're not parents yet but i think if i was a parent this movie would hit even harder oh yeah i i don't think i will i was thinking about that how much harder it would be even if i was pregnant watching this movie i don't think i could handle it because you never know granted i don't know what other countries are like but at least in this country that we live in, there's situations set up to where if we didn't have any family, granted, they're not the best when you put the kids into a system, but there is a system. Yeah, absolutely. That can be there to at least have some kind of overwatching protection. Like I said, it's not always the best, the orphan system and yeah, exactly. that stuff. But these kids literally have nothing. Yeah, and there, he at one point does as someone would and you see of course someone who gets that desperate he starts going to farms and he's stealing things and he gets caught and then he ends up getting taken to the police and that was one of the sweeter characters in this movie was the police officer because he ends up the guy who brought him in he's like do something about this the police officer is like oh yeah well the way he's at this could be considered assault and then the guy's like oh crap and then he gets out of there and you're like thank you policeman and just oh i just wish he could have 
he already helped plenty, but if he could have just done a little something. But uh, at the end of the day, eventually you get to the point where his sister is so tired she can't even really move. She's He comes back and finds her just laying in the grass, and he's eventually feeding her a melon and all that. Well, that's when you have this heartbreaking scene. He's carrying her back from the doctor and feeding her bits of shaved ice from this guy who's delivering ice, and he's asking her, what do you want to eat? And she's labeling off all this stuff, so he brings her home, and he spends every last dollar that he had to buy all this food. It was a whole backpack full mm-hmm. of food and breaks open the watermelon. And she's, oh my gosh, it was so heartbreaking when she, she's at the point where she's delirious. She's probably dehydrated as well. That doesn't help. Yeah. And she's talking to him. She Well, first she's, he sees that she's sucking on something in her mouth and, it's and a- her fruit drop container is on her chest. And We know she doesn't have any fruit drops left. So he goes into her mouth and she's sucking on one of the glass marbles that she had put in the container. Yeah. And he said, don't eat that. You know, he may have said, like, I have something else for you. And he's going over to the bag and she's starting to talk to him in that delirious state. And she said, here, I made these rice balls for you and they were clumps of mud and she's like I saved them for you and it was just so heartbreaking she's like talking all slow you can tell she's out of energy oh my gosh and I think it was more sad because you knew that the end was coming and you really didn't want it to and Mm -hmm. he's feeding her the bits of watermelon and she's just slowly chewing it that was so freaking brutal and then it goes from that into I think you just see the watermelon sitting on the ground and it slowly, not disintegrates all the way, but ants start to crawl over. It. And then you get the the voiceover with the subtitles that she never woke up and I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. And it was just so sad. <laughs> oh, no, not reliving it. Um, And then you see him going to get his ration for a burning box with charcoal. Yeah, like and the guy basically says, for a kid, you get this much, and this is how you should burn the body, and it's... And he's setting it up and putting her doll, and she had this sweet little coin purse that you see in the beginning when he's trying to comfort her when the air raids are happening. She's dumping out her treasures, and you see the marbles, and I think she had maybe like a 100 yen, Maybe in coin, Maybe. not that much. And he's like, oh, look at your rich. And just thinking back to that sweet moment, then you see him putting all of her little her, treasures in this box. And, and the he, doll and all that stuff. He puts the fruit can, the, the fruit tin, fruit drop tin in there. Yeah. And thinks better of it and pulls it out yeah. and keeps it. And that's what you see at the beginning of the movie that they chuck. So he was holding on to that to remember his sister and all that stuff. Yeah. And it, uh, yeah, through the whole burning sequence, I'm running nose, eyes. I, I couldn't. Mm. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was rough. There's no doubt about that. I. The, <laughs> the funny thing with this too is, we get done with this movie, right? Because then at the end, then <laughs> you understand. Yeah, you understand that, like, okay, this was sad. It was just basically a window. It was kind of a slice of life into wartime. So you end up going, wow, that was crazy. And so we had a little bit more time before bed. So I was like, listen, we've been watching some One Piece. Let's let's go watch some One Piece. Let's get our mind in a little bit more of a less sad state. We come upstairs. We start watching episode. Who knows? We're only a little bit into it. And then... <laughs> A character, I think, dies in that too. And it was so out the cut. We were like, oh, this is a cute backstory. Yeah, and then oh, it and then... was, oh, so and so died. And you're like, what? And then I'm just, <laughs> my voice is cracking. Not again. I looked at her, I was like, no luck tonight. Goodness <laughs> gracious. So I checked my own pulse. I didn't know what was going to happen. But yeah, Grave of the Fireflies. I can't recommend it enough. I think I, I'm going to probably end up owning this and forcing forcing it on to people because uh, I truly do think that this one's up there with the Ghibli movies. It, it won me over. I think this is one of my favorites. I don't know if I could watch it all the time because 
you know, there's entertainment value, and then there's just wanting to be sad. I and guess then if it's I being need, masochistic. Yeah, I think if I if it's a rainy day and I just want maybe you're off somewhere and I just want to cry alone by myself, maybe I'll start this puppy up. But whew, what a what a good movie. Yeah. Anything? I would. What else you got in those notes? One thing I had, which mm-hmm. I still can't figure it out. Go ahead. And I'm going to do a classic. What's in the box? Oh, yeah. that. Yeah. So you see Setsuko holding a box, coming back from his mom being buried slash burned. You don't really see. True. It looked like they were throwing bodies into a mass grave at one point. And I noticed re-watching that snippet of the film mm-hmm. that there are these wooden boxes stacked in a pile in kind of the background. Interesting. You never see him get handed it or what goes into the box. I assumed that it was his mother's ashes, but she was thrown into the I don't I don't know if when they were putting these bodies into this hole, it was a huge pile of them, if A, it was a mass grave or B, it was a mass burning. Yeah. Which I feel like if it was a mass burning that'd be weird to just take ashes that could be I, the I, other people. So you never really get concrete proof. But I noticed he doesn't draw that much attention to it. You see him on the train going back to his aunt's house. You see him putting this box in the bushes because you don't, he doesn't want people to see this. So I, was, yeah. so I was thinking, okay, maybe it is. And you see it when we get the very sad moment when they're burying the fireflies after their firelight vigil in their That little was a house. cool scene. We didn't even touch on that. I know. I was going to say what was your favorite part when I was done with oh, this. Oh, well then. All right. But you see them when they're burying the fireflies. The camera pulls back to where you see their backs, and it's inside kind of this makeshift home they have, and the camera angles over, and you see this box that you saw before. They're calling back to it, and it's glowing. So, sure, that could be the mom's ashes. What I don't get, though, in that same sentence right before when Mm -hmm. he's talking to his sister, she says, oh, we'll go. I'll take you one day to visit mom. She's buried here underneath this tree. So I honestly have no idea. Could he have been saying that to – because the thing is, is the fireflies are one thing in in the movie. But when they were the red fireflies, as we see in the intro sequence and all that, it was around him. It was around his sister. I, I I honestly do think that that was something uh, symbolizing his mother or something. Because before the aunt knew he was hiding it outside, it, it's got to be. Of course, I don't mm-hmm. know. They don't really divulge too much information on it. But that's what I would assume. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just not a deep thinker. So if it's something, I want you to lay it out for me. That's why we plain. watch. That's why we watch so many shonens. Those things are right on the nose. I'm going to fight you. Well, it looks like they're going to fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, and speaking of fireflies. So I had read that in Japanese, nouns don't change in plur, like in their plurals. Okay. So the word for fireflies, it could mean firefly or fireflies. Okay. So... Does Grave of the Fireflies, the title, mean the grave, the mass grave for those fireflies that they burned, or the grave for our sweet little firefly who died at the end? I think. I think I like that one more. Your eyes. I don't like that you're looking at me with sad (laughs) eyes. I don't like it. (laughs) Tearing over. Uh, Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I I, I just love when things do that. They could have double meanings, and it could be. Of course, what I, you want it to be. But I don't think it needs to get as deep as a Gundam, <laughs> as we complain about in the Gundam stuff. But no, I think this is the right amount of depth, the right amount of storytelling. And now let's go. I'm going to serve it right back to you. What you were going to ask me? What was your favorite portion of the movie or scene, or what? What was? If you had to describe one scene as like the best part, I really enjoyed. The beach scene. No, Weebs, I'm not talking about the beach scene (laughs) that every season of any anime gets. Oh, let's go to the beach and you're getting your... No. it. We get this sweet beach scene where, you know, they're just stripping down, probably also to clean themselves. But 
just having some fun. He ends up, you know, washing her down. She's saying, oh, it's cold. And then she's running out of the water and he's chasing her, pretending he's a bear. And it's just so sweet that you're seeing this moment, them two escaping from the realities that when they go back, it's not it's not going to yeah. this moment in time right here is what they're trying, you know, to capture. And I just thought it was so. Well, and I think there's other people at the beach at the same time. And you see that them looking over at the kids almost like, what are they doing? How, what are they? So this moment, this little pocket of fun is definitely something that's seen as kind of out of the ordinary, mm-hmm. especially at that time. No, I think that was very charming to watch. Yeah. And Jubilee is always very good, especially, you know, Totoro. They did so good at casting the voice actors for the sisters. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. they feel like legitimate kids and, like, it, it's perfect. It goes great. And this was another instance that they casted it perfectly and they animated it perfectly. You feel that moment. It's great. If I had to pick it, it wouldn't be, like, a scene, perhaps, but it would be that segment of, and this includes the Firefly thing, so we can kind of go into there, when they leave the ants, he cashes out like a big baller, and they buy that stove. They buy mm. all the little things, and it's that little sequence of making that little shelter into a home, and it is so cute. It's exactly what kids would be doing is making a home, but they buy this net. They put that up. And I loved how when um, Setsuko was looking at this, the two entrances for the cavern, she said, and this is going to be the kitchen. And then she, you see her run over, and this is going to be the front door. And then she turns and she's like, where's the bathroom? And he's like, this whole place is your bathroom. It doesn't matter. Somewhere. Yeah, that was so cute. And then there is one night. And this is, I think this would probably be the more... You can shut your eyes and remember this moment the best, I think, is they end up catching. There is p- parts in the movie where she's trying to catch a firefly. She ends up demolishing one with the palm of – she was like in uh, like a Netero. <laughs> <laughs> just giving him the 99 hand or whatever. But they end up catching one, whatever. It's the big brother. He can catch it and all that stuff. But eventually when they have the net up – they're like, oh, it's dark in here. We can't see anything. So they catch a bunch and then bring it into the inside of the net and they let them all go. So pretty, unfortunately. And honestly, it kind of goes with the tone of the movie. That's like that last upbeat moment where it's like, wow, things are growing great. And then you notice by morning all of those fireflies are dead. And then that's the slope of like things start getting pretty real from then on out. So I think that would probably be my favorite yeah. portion. Not to uh, drag it down. Oh, boy. I forgot to bring up my second nitpick, oh, okay. which I Go mentioned ahead. watching while watching the movie. I get it. He's going to take care of his sister. Why couldn't he have gotten a dang job? I don't know what he would be doing, but if the ant's complaining that he should be working, that obviously means there could be work to be done. Yeah. If he really, if, and it breaks my heart because I don't know... Obviously, these are characters in a make-believe world based on real life, situations that have happened in history, but I don't know what... She, she's obviously left alone for in other parts portions, of the time yeah. during the day. So why couldn't he, if he really cared and wanted to keep her... Is it just because he's so young and he can't think about that? Are you calling her boy lazy? <sighs> No, because... It's, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do agree. Or even maybe... We're talking about a young little teen. If I put myself back at that age, I wouldn't have been doing this either. But who knows? When you gots to, you gots to. And that's why I was almost going to say I maybe agree. he's just at the age where he's not understanding how much time and effort it takes to be an adult. But with the town demolished, he's just on the run. You don't know if there's maybe he did try one of the afternoons. We don't get any of this. so Oh, but he's more. going around during the air raid stealing stuff out of people's houses. Hey, listen. <laughs> He had to, all right? And I think he hit his aunt's house. He could have been doing honest work. True, but I think he hit his aunt's house, and I'll take any stealing from that woman. She is Well, true, because she stole a lot of stuff from Absolutely. She sucks. Have we said that 13 times yet? She sucks. Oh, terrible part. What? When we're going back to the rice porridge scene, and the little sister doesn't want to have anything to do with rice porridge. Yeah. He asks the aunt, 
you know, don't we have any of those pickled plums left that he brought? A oh, whole and they were jar. all his, too. And those were things that they didn't get as rations. Those were saved from his house that he, that he brought. And she said, oh, those have been gone ages ago. Fish, what you mean? Yeah. They've been gone ages. Yeah, Where, she, they've been eating. Where's my portion said. of the pickled plums? I was well, so pissed. Yeah, that got me annoyed because you know what his portion was? It was the entire jar. So that was annoying. <laughs> She might be one of my biggest villains. I really, I, 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 don't get me wrong. She's got to handle her family, but still, come on. She's got to handle her daughter. Let's reprise that That's statement. That's true. And even her daughter did have a job. I don't know. Maybe the main character could have, but would we have this tale? No. So I like it how it was. All right. Especially when he stole from her. <laughs> That's that. So that's just a quick little. I, I truly do hope if, if you've listened to this and you didn't watch it, please do it. This is just the segment where Tom begins to just beg you, please, for the love of all that is holy, get out there. If you know me, I'll probably own this at some point. I'll, I'll lend it to you. But a good movie. Very happy to have watched it. And I'm, I'm, I'm chock out of it. I, I'm ready to be happy again. Yeah, me too. Oh. I need a I need a couple, maybe like six months before I watch this again. At <laughs> I'd, least I'd I don't say think... let's go watch One Piece, but someone will end up dead, or I don't know what the heck is gonna go on. But are you? I mean, are you done? Yeah, roll out the red carpet for me. All right, you got it. Well, if I'm gonna announce it one more time, I'm done. I'm gonna tell you, you're done too. And, you know, the people are looking for a goodbye, so why don't you tell them goodbye? Bye, guys.